Well, hello everybody. It is two o'clock and just starting a live feed here. I want to do some live cooking with the uh, Crock-Pot Express slash um, Instapot style pressure cooker. So, how's everybody doing today? Please feel free to share this and send likes. Would love to um, get all kinds of views and likes on here. So, so it's a very, very simple recipe, as most of mine are. I've taken some um, ground steak and cut into stew pieces. I've got one cup of pearl barley. I've mixed up beef uh, base, restaurant quality beef base, and I mixed a high concentration because barley will absorb about six times its own weight in liquid. So this is two cups highly concentrated. Also be using black pepper, Goya adobo powder, and frozen mixed vegetables. So what I've done is I have added a little bit of oil to my uh, pressure cooker and preheated it on brown saute. And we're going to do the uh, meat in batches. So no more meat than that is. Two batches should be plenty. So we're just going for some caramelization on the meat, um, color equal, equals flavor. And we're going to do layers of seasoning with the Goya adobo. Adobo powder is um, salt, garlic, black pepper, oregano, and turmeric. Let me get my spider out here. For those of you not familiar, this is called a spider. And this is the Crock Pot Express six quarters equivalent to the uh, Instapot. I have a bowl here to put the browned off meat into. And just that quickly we've achieved that level of color.
And I want a little bit more. I've also preheated my water in my electric kettle so I'm not adding cold water to the hot pot. That will accelerate the, the time it takes to pressurize. Making a vegetable beef and barley soup. So comment where you're from, like and share. Appreciate everybody. Hi Mary. Hi Preacher, thanks for joining. I know where you're from, goofball. <laughs> So what do you think I am, anyhow? Yeah, it's about, um, well, it made it up to a blistering 18 degrees here in Ohio today. So it's a good suit day. Now we're going to pull this meat out. And get ready to add the next batch. Boy, does that smell good. Wish we had smell vision Okay, second batch of meat is in. Can you hear that sizzle? Um, does Jimmy have Jimmy follow me and I can send him an invite? Um, that is um, ground steak cut into stew pieces. That is that is um, browning off in the in the in the pressure cooker on the brown saute mode. So that's what it looks like. There you are, Jimmy. Yep. Now, I don't know how... to do a lot of this. I'm still learning this TikTok silliness. You always want to keep your meat moving. You don't want to burn your meat. It's awfully bad. Awfully bad situation when you burn your meat. I'm finer and frog here. Split four ways, Jimmy. How you doing? Yep, I see. I see a red number one there. Well, you got me. Yep. Let's just do you and me. This is the first time I've done a live with anybody. All right. Give me nothing. Give me nothing personal. So, are you, uh, are you frying that steak in that crock pot? 
I've got a little bit of vegetable oil, and I'm actually just browning it on the brown saute function. Oh. And it's actually a uh, multi-cooker. It's a, pr it's a pressure cooker, uh, rice cooker. You can bake in it. You can make yogurt. You can make uh, desserts. Um, you can do beans and chili, slow cook in it, meat and stew, uh, multi-grain soup. You can program a start time, set it up for a start time to program. I'm going to have to get me one of those. Yeah, um, everybody likes the Instapot because they know the name. I prefer the Crock-Pot Express, a little bit less money. And I think the liner is better. And something that I did was I ordered extra ceiling rings for the lid. And that way, if I cook something savory, then I don't, you know, I use one ceiling ring. I have another one dedicated about cooking something sweet, like a dessert. Uh huh. And that way, I don't get the, uh, the the savory flavor in my sweets. Plus, I keep extra ceiling rings around in case one goes bad or silicone. You can buy a set of three for around twenty dollars. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my barley in. I'm going to toast it a little bit. And again, that will that will add some flavor to it. Almost like making a risotto. We are troublemakers. Huh? Short one said, Oh Lord, two troublemakers are alive. That's right. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, Jimmy. We might learn something watching Bill cook. Don't worry. She can she can probably uh, run faster scared than we can mad, preacher. <laughs> probably. I don't run very often. I don't need it unless it's a pretty girl or something good to eat at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> and even, even now, I don't go very fast. I didn't run very fast in the, on, my, on my good days. So there's what the meat looks like. It's about a pound and a half of a uh, round steak that I cut into uh, stew pieces. Nice. And if you buy stew meat, it's about $7 a pound. By buying the uh, round steak... I got it for four four eighty six a pound, and I've got enough meat in there to make make three more batches like this. Oh, nice! So there, that's toasted off pretty good. So now I added my meat and the juices back in. And we're going to add in. This is two cups of that uh, beef stock, very very highly concentrated. And then, and then, barley will absorb about six times its own weight in liquid. So six cups of water to one cup of barley. You can feed the fleet with barley. So I've got two cups in. There's two more of hot water. And two more of hot water. I'm going to do just a, just about a half a cup more, just a little bit extra. That's my electric kettle that I boil water in. Make my coffee and my tea and stuff with it. Oh, nice. I think we'll boil almost two liters of water in about three minutes. <laughs> we'll add a little bit more adobo powder seasoning. I'm putting all that into that crock pot yeah let me turn it here a little bit so I've added all that once I get this all in I'll, I'll take you over to show you a little fresh ground black pepper a 
I have to be careful what seasoning I use because I'm definitely allergic to onions and peppers. Yeah. I <laughs> If I get them, I actually go anaphylactic and have to take an epi shot. Mm. So I use, like, if I want something spicy, I use ground cumin for my heat. But if anybody likes uh, to, to smoke or to barbecue and you like good spice rubs, uh, look up a company online called Musket Powder, M U S K E T E Powder, like the old rifle. That's a veteran-owned company. they got about five different flavors of spice rubs. That's a two-pound bag of frozen mixed veggies. I used about half of it. And you bought the right kind, too. What new uh, can there? I don't like canned vegetables. Frozen no, I, I, don't, I don't use canned. I use frozen. Yep, that's what we use. So, and oh, you were asking about a snake bite? Yeah. That's a snake bite. Hmm. So now I'm going to gently try to take this over to show you. So bear with me while I try to get the phone out of the holder here. Yeah. Don't drop the thing. Oh, no, I won't. So that's what it looks like inside. Oh, nice. Now I'm going to try to put the phone back in. Oh, I think I may have paused. Everybody there? Yep, we're here. We can see. Okay. It. Okay. So this is the lid to the to the to the pressure cooker. This is your vent. When it pressurizes, this goes up and seals. And this is the, the silicone sealing ring I was telling you about. This blue ring. Mm-hmm. So we're going to put the lid on, lock it, make sure our vent is set to close. We're going to hit start, stop, and we're going to go to soup, and it defaults to 30 minutes on high pressure, and it won't take it long to pressurize since we've already had it hot and we added hot liquid, so it should pressurize pretty quickly. So y'all hang tight. I'm going to go put these extra vegetables back in the freezer so they don't he frost, and I'll be right back. Okay. Jimmy, we're going to have to get us one of those, those Instapot Crock-Pot things. That looks pretty good. I make chili in mine. I, take, I make macaroni and cheese. Um, I make spaghetti. Hmm. All kinds of good stuff. And there's a ton of cooking videos on YouTube how to how to cook and anything you can do in the Instant Pot you can do in this. Now is that an Instant Pot? It's just Crock Pot brand. Yeah, Instant Pot is a brand name, and it's kind of become a generic name for term for any um, multi cooker pressure cooker like this. So when somebody says Instant Pot, you know, Farberware makes one, Crock Pot makes one, Instant Pot makes some Pioneer Woman. Um, the Instapot has an unfinished stainless steel liner. The Crock-Pot Express, mine is probably going on six years old. And I've got It's got the non-stick liner. And as long as you don't use metal tools or if you're careful like I was with that spider, I, I'm still on the original liner and it's doing great. Hmm. So. Well, we're going we gonna to have to get one. Yeah, shop them online and get your best price on them. But she'll start hissing here in a few minutes, and then she go tick. That that little plunger will steal. Mm -hmm. And once it once the timer goes off when it's through cooking, you can either do what they call a natural release, where you leave it leave it, it goes it goes into a keep warm function. And it will gradually depressurize, or you can flip the vent open and do a fast release on the pressure. If you want to get a steam facial, do the fast release. <laughs> Save your money going to a spa. Y'all, that's it, I guess. But um, how long does it will take for that soup to cook in there? Um, it should be done in 30 minutes or less, even with, even with the uncooked barley. Hmm. 
He's making vegetable soup. If I did, if I, beef vegetable, beef barley vegetable. And the reason I like barley instead of rice, barley has more of a chew to it than rice does. It doesn't get mushy. Hmm. Well, that's pressurizing. There's a cutting board my dad made. Oh, that's pretty. That's four different kinds of wood. And keep my dad in prayer. He's 85, and we found out he's going to have to have his knee re right knee replaced on the 13th. Because he's had a resurgence of his prostate cancer, so. That's a multi-cooker. Yep, called the Crock-Pot Express. I just call mine Fred. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you listen, you can hear that hissing. Hear it starting uh, to hiss. Hear. Uh -huh. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> See the steam coming up out of there, out of this vent hole. Well, that does heat up pretty quick, doesn't it? Well, like I say, the pot was already hot, and I added hot water instead of cold, which would have dropped the temperature. Your mama spread. Your mop. <laughs> and there, it, it just sealed. Hear it? How the hissing stopped? Yeah. And each of your settings, like meat stew... Uh, beans and chili, rice risotto, yogurt, etc. Any of your pressure cooking, you have two choices on either high or low pressure. If you do the slow cook mode, you have high or low temperature. And if you choose low pressure, it will automatically adjust the um, the cooking time for the lower pressure. Same with the slow cook mode, it will adjust the cooking time automatically when you choose high or low temperature. I don't know, it's kind of a pain having a cooker that's smarter than I am. Yeah, but I can some... go ahead. <clears throat> hmm. And there's a little uh, container that snaps on the back. As it heats, some of that liquid will get past it, and it has a little little drip catcher, so it, it doesn't drip. And it's got a little weep hole. So when you when you take it apart to wash, you just wash that out in hot water and set it to dry. And it's easy to clean because I just take the liner out. So how long do you think that that vegetable soup will last you? Oh, that much? If um, Well, I'll take some over to my folks uh, tomorrow. But if I left that for myself, that would last me a week. Really? Oh, yeah. And it free you can freeze it. Mm. So I can, I can hear that bubbling and boiling inside there. Now, do you, do you get a lunch break at work? You only work four hours, though, right? I work four hours, so I get one 15-minute break. So, and I have to be careful how much I work because being on on Social Security disability, I'm only allowed to make so much or I lose my disability. Yeah. And they were, um, they they wanted me to work an extra half hour a day. Well, they never relieved me on time. They were only 15 to 25 minutes late relieving me. And that put me over my earnings. I had to I had to appeal three times to keep my disability. So I cut my availability back to four hours a day for four and a half. I said, listen, you guys are taking advantage of it. And I said, I'm not going to lose my disability because Social Security fought me for three years. I was homeless. I lived I lived in my car for six months wow. while I was trying to get my disability. And my VA primary care doctor found out I was living in my car. And her family went on vacation to Florida, and she made about five calls to Social Security from her vacation. Within a week of her getting back, I was approved. That's nice. Heck yeah. And this was back in 2013. So I walk about 90% of the time with two canes or a walker. I've got neuropathy. I've got no feeling below the knee, so I've got no sense of balance. Plus, my knees are have zero cartilage, so I sound like a gravel truck. Ooh. What caused that? Was it the military? Diabetes. Hmm. So, yeah, when I go to get, when I go to up a dietary appointment, they're always like, check my feet. Like, do you feel this? I'm like, feel what? <laughs> so, 
So it'll take is see the see the timer counting down. Yeah. That's pretty slick, Gizzy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so do they relieve you on time now? Well, they're they're better about it, but now now that I've taken an extra half hour off, if I'm five if I'm five or ten minutes late, like I am most days, it won't put me over. Hmm. So it, it's it's called um, I call it hedging my bets. Why does it why is it so hard for them to relieve you on time? Because most of the people that relieve me are these younger people and well, they're the kind of people that if they're scheduled to start work at say twelve, they come in the door at twelve and they spend ten minutes clocking in and playing on their phone and using the restroom and so many of these people want to get paid no thirty, forty dollars an hour, but they've got a twenty five cent an hour work ethic. Yep. I used to say a $2 an hour work ethic, but I think I was being too generous. <laughs> yeah. I'm old school. First yeah. job I ever had when I was, when I was uh, 13 years old was bailing hay, 100 pound bales. I got paid three cents a bale. Wow. And we would put up a thousand bales or more in a day. My first job ever, I made $5.25 an hour. That's what I made. Well, I'd, have, I'd have thought I was in high cotton for that kind of money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what during during the pandemic, when I was considered essential, I worked both the entrance and the exit door at Sam's Club. And then they created a position called member specialist, which is what I do now. I check the receipts at the exit door, plus the self-checkout or the scan and go feature. It's an app on the phone. I answer questions about that, technical support, because I was a computer programmer as well in a past life. And that bumped me up almost almost four dollars an hour. Hmm, that's cool. Hey Bill, Thor yeah. one said that she's gonna go take a shower, but she's listening. And she okay. called TikTok hubby. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to turn around so you're not looking at just the, just the pot. You can look at my, my ugly mug. Years ago, I used to run a bicycle warehouse. And one of my forklift drivers come around a corner too fast. I said, brother, you got to take in corner slower next time. He said, why? I said, I can't take that much ugly all at once. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, caveman. So are you, uh, you going to make like garlic bread or anything like that to go with Texas toast? Uh, Probably. And um, actually what I do, if I don't make my bread from scratch, I buy the Rhodes frozen bread dough. And I have a um, little Power XL. That's an air fryer, uh, toaster oven, convection oven. Uh, you can grill steaks in it and everything. They don't talk about microwave. So I bake cookies in that. I bake bread in that, biscuits, um, toast bagels. Um, it's got a grill pan that came with it. So you can actually sear steaks off. And it came with a flat pan, but then I, it'll hold two of these uh, eight sheet uh, bake, ba baking sheets as well. Huh. It's got two air fryer baskets. You can put in one air fryer basket and and the grill pan or one air fryer basket and a baking sheet. You can cook three different levels at once on it. Hmm. And it's got settings for, you know, air fry, grill, bake, toast, um, pizza. It'll, it'll handle a 12-inch pizza. Heck yeah. Hi, Joanna. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Hi, Joanna. I'm going to scroll here and see. Hi, Caveman. Jimmy's still here. He's watching. Yep. Yep. I, I see him. Hey, what what do you call a dog with no legs? Doesn't matter. He's not going to come anyhow. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, caveman, it is a rice cooker, has a rice cooker fu function as well. But you know where you find a dog with no legs? Right yeah. where you left them. Right, yeah, right where you left them. <laughs> yep, there's Jimmy. He said yes. And Joanna said, nice to meet you. Likewise. Let's see. I am. I was. I was um, operations maintenance division, Naval Air Station, Meridian, Mississippi, nineteen seventy-eight to eighty-one. I was in seventy-six to eighty-two. I ran the transit line, and I was qualified to work on eighty different types of aircraft when I got out. Basically, basically if it flew, I fixed it. <laughs> and speaking of aircraft, anybody anybody that's in the Central Ohio area, um, I volunteer at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force over in Dayton, Ohio, once a month. That's the oldest and largest military aviation museum in the entire world. Preacher, you've been there. It is an amazing, amazing museum. And the oldest that we're celebrating 100 years this year. And we have a lot of historic, very famous aircraft. We have Boxcar, which is the B-29 that dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki that ended World War II. We have the actual Memphis Bell there. I've we seen have four, that. Yep. We have four presidential aircraft from Franklin Roosevelt, Sacred Cow, uh, Truman's um, Independence, Eisenhower's Columbine 3, and Sam 26000, which was the first jet-powered presidential aircraft. And that was the one that President Kennedy was in Dallas on when he was assassinated. They flew his body back to Washington on. And you can walk, you can go up and go through all four of those aircraft. And admission to the museum is free. Hi, Sandy. Hi, June. Hi, Joanna. Um, I never got officially uh, qualified to fly one, but I was an air crew in, in a helicopter, a search and rescue utility air crew. So we've I, I flew in uh, H-46, is the, big, the Navy version of the Chinook, the big double rotor. And then we switched to the Hueys. Hi, Daily Magic. Hi, Agape. Brian. Joanna, I, I think, I think, I really think that um, that's almost looking like what they're trying to do is get us into a, into a WW3. Um. My grandfather was actually mustard gassed in France in World War One. They said he wouldn't live past 40. He dropped over at 91 shoveling snow. So, but, you know, I still try to stay active. I, I like to go fishing. Um, I volunteered to the Air Force Museum. If anybody's ever been to the Ohio State Fair, um, the big smoky bear is down the division of forestry area. That's 15 foot tall. It talks to the kids. have been there since 1964. I did the voice for 21 years. So I would talk to about 3,000 kids a year and I knew them all by name. Hmm. What's up, Eric? Yeah, I remember one little girl stopped to tie her shoes. And I said, hey, while you're down there, make sure my shoes are tied. She says, Smokey, you're not wearing shoes. So I'm not. You mean I have bare feet? And all the grown-ups groaned. I said, I know my jokes are unbearable. Hi to someone's comment now. Who, whose comment? I couldn't figure out how to reply to someone's comment. Yeah, you just got to kind of tap right on the name. Oh, I got it. You like those videos, Eric? That one guy. Oh, my God. He's so stupid. I am the definition or whatever of a I turn men into boys or whatever he said. I don't know. Yeah, my left little finger's more of a man than he is. But yeah, it when he was like, what the heck did he say? Or I'm what separate or separates um uh, men from boys. And when I read that, I I that was like genuine. That was so funny. The dude's an idiot. 
No, no, no. You know what separates men, men from boys? The price of their toys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I turned off too, Eric. People down to, nine, down to 19 minutes on the timer. But um, you can't, you can't, how do you do it, Bill? You don't tag me, but you. Like if, if I want, if I want you, if I want to share a video with you. No, where you, where you tag me in the video. I think it's, you mentioned me. No, I tag you. Oh, I have mentions off. Bill tags me all the time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I can't run, but I can still play tag. <laughs> so, oh, I wish you guys could smell how good it smells in here. Why do you have ta tags off, Daily Magic? Oh, too much spam. You should turn them back on and I'll tag you in every single one of my videos. <laughs> Speaking Hell, of spam, I... any, any Monty Python fans? <laughs> what? Uh, any Speaking of spam, any, any Monty Python fans? Oh, I love Monty Python. Yep. Remember, remember spam a lot? <laughs> Thirsty fellows. You know, it's funny. We sell spam at Sam's Club and also like White Castles. And during the holiday season, we sell fruitcake. And I used to work for Harry and David, too. And I I had one little old lady call in. She very conspiratorially says, I want to order my holiday fruitcake. I said, well, okay, I can help you with that. She says, I think I'm the only person that eats them. I said, really? You must have a whole house full of them. And she said, why do you say that? I said, well, I said, if you're the only person that eats them, we sell thousands of them every year. So you must have a whole house full of fruitcakes. And she giggled, and she wanted up buying an extra one to put in her freezer. <laughs> but, uh, Eric, do you blame them? All the thirsty fellows, do you blame them? A coconut and a swallow. How did you get a coconut? <clears throat> a swallow, an eight-pound swallow, carried a 13-pound coconut. Or something like that, I don't know. Yeah. She I, like the, I like the nights that go, neat. <laughs> they they use the coconuts to um, mimic the hook, the hook. <laughs> yeah or what, that, when he's trying to cross the bridge with the black knight yeah that was the Monty Python hunt for well, the yeah. search for the holy grail yeah Nay. it's just a flesh wound me you've lost your arm <laughs> That was that yeah. was pretty fun. That or the lumberjack song. Remember the lumberjack song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah all the time. I mm. used to attend bar at the Ohio Theater, and I actually I would work the shows and get to meet the celebrities afterwards. And so I I worked Eric Idol came one time, and I got to meet him. So got to meet Who? people, meet groups like the Beach Boys and. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Gallagher, the comedian, who just passed away not too long ago, but I got to meet him. Daily Magic, if you do it, if you do that, I'll do edit. I'll tuck my arm in my in my sleeve. <laughs> You're right, Daily Magic. You're missing your arm. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't work at a hospital. That if I do that, it'll be dumb. I'll do it in my garage with my saws. Hey, where does a one-legged waitress work? I hop. Yep. <laughs> I know you know, that. you know what they call her when she's standing by the wall? No. Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. 
Yeah, we're down to 15 minutes. It's bubbling away in here. Yeah, is that is that bowling? Yep, it's, it's burling. See, being stationed in Mississippi for three and a half years, I had to learn to speak Southern. Like, do you know how to pronounce the word? You know what? You know what all is? A W L. Yeah. You know what that is? All, all, ew, woo, or what? Oh, I got to change all in my car. Oh, oh. Yeah, all. Oh. oh. Or R N A R N. All right, Bill. Is it pecan or pecan? Well, Yankees call it pecan. Southerners call it pecans. Pecan. I call it. Yep. Pecan. Yep. You, you know what you know what an R N is, don't you? What? A R N R N. R N. Yeah, my shirt wrinkles have got an R in it. There was actually a book out years ago called How to Speak Southern, and these guys wrote a whole book on all these different Southern words. Really? Yep. Man, I'm going to have to look look for that. <laughs> yeah, it I'm was called to, How to Speak Southern. I'm going to have to get that book, and I need to get them um, channel locks. Yep. You see, I sent a set, my, my best friends I served with in the Navy up in Massachusetts, and, and I sent them the video that I did on TikTok about it. He said, I never saw any such a thing as them. I said, I said, you'll never go back to vice grips. You'll throw your vice grips away. I my dad started my dad started using those in the 50s. I've been using them since the 60s. I'm definitely gonna get a pair of them. Yep, they make two sizes. Those are the nine inch, which will handle up to about a about a excuse me, about a 1.2 inch um, bolt or nut. And right now they're on sale on Amazon for about 20 bucks a pair. And then the large size, which is 13, will handle up to a two inch jaw opening. And they're about $43 a pair. But channel locks are still, channel locks have a lifetime guarantee. They're still made in the U.S. using U.S. steel. Yeah. So they're worth every penny of it. Yeah. But I'll bet over the years I've lost eight or 10 pair of those channel locks where people have tried them and then borrowed them and they never came home. I have um, a dry erase board in my wood shop. Yeah. So if one of my neighbors borrow one of my tools, I write their name and what tool they have. So I never forget who has what. I used to have a, a sticker on my toolbox that you can borrow the tools, but the mechanic goes with them. <laughs> so, well, thank you for coming on live with me. That helps. I appreciate that. Yeah. I uh I almost lost one of my industrial fans, um, yeah, and my battery powered Dewalt sawzall. If I wouldn't have had it written down on my dry erase board, yeah, I've lost uh, tools. I've lost CDs and you know albums and tapes and. <laughs> but you know it's just stuff. It can be replaced. Yeah, you can't replace. You can't. It's harder to replace friends than it is to replace things. Do you have to work tomorrow? No, I just work Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday mornings. But tomorrow morning, we're going out to Jack down to that pancake breakfast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we have a group that gets together. We call ourselves the Romeos. Yeah. Stands for Retired Old Man Eating Out. <laughs> <laughs> See, ya. Uh... I actually, I don't have any more friends. I had two friends and both of them um, have has died. One had a heart attack and the other one got cancer. But yeah, all of my friends are way older than what I am. Yeah. Well, you know Kirkersville, don't you? Yeah. Well, I used to be the president of the village council in Kirkersville. And we had issues. We had four females on the, on the council and two men plus the male mayor. And since we didn't always vote the way that the female thought that we should vote, they sued the village council at Al, everybody, including themselves, plus every male in, in village government, claiming that we harassed them and discriminated against them. So it cost the village insurance company about quarter million dollars to defend that lawsuit over two years. Wow. 
And Judge Marceline out of Newark ordered them to undergo psychological evaluation. The official finding was that they had authority issues and they hated man. And he dismissed the case and they tried to sue to get, make the insurance company cover their legal fees for, for prosecuting it. And they told him to pound sand. <laughs> pound sand. Get out of my sandbox. Pound sand. Yep. Take a long walk on a short pier. Yep. <laughs> or as we said, go take a flying leap at a rolling donut. <laughs> Looks like your TikTok wife is still here. She must still be in the, in the shower. Yep. Hey, how many skinny people does it take to fill a shower? I don't know. No one knows they keep going down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Hi, Sharon, King Wahoo, Taylor, Joanna. Scrolling up here to see who all's in. Yeah. See, my philosophy on a joke is if I get a laugh or a groan, it's a good result as long as nobody's throwing things. I'm pretty sure I have more people in the show. <laughs> I always say it's okay to laugh as long as you don't point. Any better, Sharon? I'd be exceptional. How about you? So I think maybe tomorrow night I might come on live and do a, do a um, little karaoke live. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did that. The last one of those I did, I had about 400 people pass through. Really? And the last, I tried to do a short live from whatever gallery I'm working at the museum. And the last one of those I, I did, I had 600 people watch it. That museum is, is amazing. I want to go back. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be working the 11th of this month and the 11th of next month. You want to know what disappointed me about that, though? What's that? The space shuttle wasn't real. Well, let me, let me tell you something about that, though. Every place that got a real space shuttle, a full space shuttle, you can stand outside and look at it. That section that we have is the crew compartment trainer that every astronaut that flew on a space shuttle mission trained on. And we built everything back to, to full size. So when you walk up the wings, you're walking up the full size of what the wings would have been on the, on a full shuttle. Yep. You come through the cargo bay, but you can see inside the flight deck, the lower deck and the lab on this were like at the Smithsonian. You can't see inside theirs. Hmm. So that kind of changes the perspective a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess so, Bill. And and also uh, that cockpit three hundred and sixty. All well, right, Jimmy, we'll wait here. <laughs> Jimmy said you got to go feed the animals. I said we'll wait here. <laughs> everything else, like everything else that I seen, um, was amazing. Like I didn't have any complaints at all. Even the food. Like we went up to the to the cafe and I had a burger and fries. Yeah. It was amazing. And I was surprised. Yeah. Now the Valkyrie Cafe, the one you're talking about, is going to be closed the whole month of February because uh the museum foundation or the museum foundation has been running that through an agreement with uh, the the Air Force Support Squadron who oversees the maintenance of the museum. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happened, but they lost their agreement. So there's a, there's a new group coming in to run it, and it's going to be closed the whole month of February so they can take out their equipment and bring in new equipment. But back between Building 3 and Building 4 at the Overlook, they've got what's called, um, oh, I forget what it's called. It's a, they don't have, they're not, not, not going to have like the hot food like that, but they're going to have like grab-and-go stuff and yeah. a small gift shop, and that will be open. Plus, you can still, you know, bring um, like, like picnic lunches, you can't eat in the museum, of course, but you can go to your car and eat. And um, and admission to the museum is free. They take no taxpayer dollars. They're funded solely by donations. And the exception is the IMAX theater and the simulator rides. 
are um, they charge for those and that money goes and the gift shop and that money goes for the funding of the museum. I did the simulator. That. Yeah, and they're, they're going to have it. They're having an event uh, coming up this month called an After Dark event. And they're going to have in building three, three or two, I think it's in two. They're going to have a dance floor down and have, have like a swing band and have swing dancing with bar. And they'll have um, people in costume in the different galleries. So you can go through the museum after dark. It's like from, from six to nine or seven to 10. And it's like $35 a, a ticket, but that money goes, goes to fund the museum as well. And they're going to have more events like that coming up. So if you go to the museum website, which is nationalmuseum.af.mil, and look under events, you and you can sign up also for emails, and they'll keep you posted of what's coming up. Hmm. I don't. But know yeah, that later I did the we did the jet simulator. Oh my god, it was so fun, so <laughs> much. Fun. And then we did do uh, the IMAX theater also. Yeah. You remember the movie, The Sound of Music? Yes. When I was, that came out in 64. I wasn't very old. And we went to see it at a theater on East Broad Street in Columbus. And the only seats available were in the front row. At the opening when that helicopter's flying and then the ground falls away. I had to run out of the theater. I got sick. <laughs> My mom said, where are you going? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Then I wound up flying in, in helicopters. The first time I flew in a helicopter was two days after I got the operation in Meridian. They said, we need somebody for hoist practice on a training flight. Who wants to do it? Being dumb and young, just 18, I said, I'll do it. Me. I'd forgotten that the word Navy stands for never again volunteer yourself. So we flew out over a clearing in the woods, and they put the horse collar under my arms, and I was sitting on the edge of the door. They unplugged my mic cord and my helmet so I couldn't hear anything. And the winch, the boom swung out. These two hands smacked me in the back. And next thing I know, I'm going, Zzz. And it was then I learned that rescue hoists on helicopters have a little button called a pickle button. And if the cable gets fouled in the trees, it lets it free spool like when you cast a fishing reel. So I'm falling just a little bit, little bit slower than a brick. And then I learned when you let go of the button, it doesn't just slow the reel down, it locks the drum. And a certain part of my anatomy went down past my ankles. <laughs> so I got down on the ground. I was hot. I had a walkie-talkie, and they flew off. I got them back in. And they weren't done yet. Those big rotor blades act like a big static generator, and 85 feet of cable holds a lot of charge. Yeah. And they didn't tell me you had to let it ground before you grabbed it. So I grabbed that cable and kerpow. <laughs> wow. So they got me back up in the bird and they were just having a ball laughing. I said, yeah, I said, that's okay. How many got, minutes? I, I want to see one, it. One minute left. Yeah. You say you put barley in it instead of rice, right? Yeah. Rice will rice is very easy to overcook and it will get mushy. Plus you have to rinse the rice about three times to get the starch out of it, or it'll get real sticky and clump up. Yeah. That barley, the only thing I did was the oil the little bit of oil that was in there from browning the meat. Uh -huh. I put the barley in, I toasted it for about for about two minutes. I'm excited to see what this uh what this looks like. Is good stuff, <laughs> if I say so myself. Oh, there's the timer. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick release on it here. Ooh. See what I mean about a steam facial? Yep. I know exactly what you mean by a steam facial now. Now, if you cook pasta or... Um, Right by itself in there. You want to let it slow release for about four minutes, four or five minutes before you open that. Otherwise, it will put liquid out because it foams up.
So what do you think of that cooker? I like that cooker. I'm going to get me one of those. <laughs> you know, one of the most important rules of life is never trust a restaurant with a skinny chef. That one makes So what's it counting down now for? It's on, it's on keep warm mode. Oh. And it will stay on keep warm for up to four hours. Huh. And then it shuts off automatically. It goes into standby. You got one too, Eric? It takes a little bit of time for that to be pressurized, doesn't it? Yeah. But I'll show you that I'll show you something really cool when I do open the lid. You'll hear a tick when that vent, when that uh, plunger drops, and then you can open the lid. Hmm. Yeah, I live in a senior complex out here in Pataskala. I waited two years on the list to get into here, and I just started my uh, fourth year here. Okay, there it just unlocked. So now you turn it, got the lock and unlock. Yeah. Lift it off. Now then, let the let, let the drain in. Set your lid like that. Oh, it's got a little holder. How cool is that? Right. Okay, I'm going to get a bowl here to. You want to swing here just a second. Here's what it looks like. Let me see that barley. Okay, let me get a spoon here. I've never used barley. I like barley because it, it's a little bit more al dente. It's not mushy like rice. Oh, nice. Huh. I'll tell you in a second if it's done. Perfect. Perfectly okay. done. Seasoned right. I want some vegetable soup. I thought you didn't like vegetable soup. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to try that vegetable soup. <laughs> I'm going to try to take the, the phone out here so I can show you down in the pot here. Oh, yeah. And I've got a big Rubbermaid container that I will put that into to keep in the fridge. Hmm. Once it cools. But there, you know, round steak is not known for being a tender cut of meat. Yeah. Bottom right. That just melts in your mouth. Hmm. So there's all your meat and carrots and green beans and corn and peas and total make that whole that whole batch of soup which will last a week probably about four dollars worth of meat about a dollar worth of mixed vegetables um maybe 75 cents worth of beef base broth and just a few cents worth of, um, you know, seasoning, the adobe powder, because that jar of adobe powder is like about two and a half dollars at Walmart. And that'll last you, I use it a lot and it lasts me about six months. Hmm. So that whole pot, that whole pot of soup right there is probably right around $10 to eat for a week. 
Yeah, I want to try the barley. I've never, I've never done, I've never done barley. Well, you can buy quick barley. I use the regular barley that I order through Amazon through Bob's Red Mill. Because the quick barley is easy to overcook. It, it still won't get mushy. But I like regular, you know, um, pearl barley is what they call it. And that's the same barley they used to make, um, you know, alcohol with. Like beer. Yeah. That's the same grain. You get that at Walmart? Well, you, no. Um, you, can get the, you can get the pearl at the Kroger. Walmart only sells the quick barley. Kroger sells her, like I say, I order mine in a in a two pound bag on Amazon through from Bob's Red Mill. Hmm. And like I say, two pounds of barley will last a long time. It goes a long way because that was that was one cup of barley that I put in there was all. I'll make some liquor with it. Yep. Welcome back, Jimmy. Hmm. Well, I'm yep. gonna take Bill. Yeah. I've been I've been on live quite a bit. My wife's home from work. I don't want to spend all all of it on live. Yeah, you don't want to get in the doghouse. That'd be right. pretty rough. <laughs> so, well, thanks for coming in and helping host this. Yeah. Thanks for going so, live. Appreciate it. Well, I I appreciate it, and we'll have to do it again. We'll have to do some have to do some music there. Do some picking and grinning. We'll do something. Should I tell them my Should I tell them my joke? I told you about banjo players. Do it. Tell them. How do you know when a banjo player is knocking at your door? He keeps knocking faster and faster. And doesn't know when he's supposed to come in. <laughs> <laughs> or um, what's the definition of perfect pitch? That's the sound the banjo makes when it lands on top of the accordion in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> all right bill i'll talk to you later enjoy your all right you have a good and feel better well jimmy thank you for next time next time we'll kick you in here too you can help you can help so um while we're still on live here are there any recipes that you would like to see me do i i'm open to suggestions um i love to cook i like any kind of food that starts with an f once the weather warms up, we're going to be doing some smoking. I've got an electric smoker. We're going to be doing some smoking. Um, do uh, We'll do uh, turkey. We'll do pulled pork. We'll do uh, ribs. Um, all that. But if you go to my YouTube channel, which is at Bill underscore H, or my TikTok, I've got cooking videos as well as karaoke and music videos. I've got videos from the Air Force Museum, uh, from the State Fair. I've got a good friend who does lumberjack shows around the country, and I, I film his shows for him. Um, but um, we'll do some. I've got a, I've got a um, stuffed waffle maker. Maybe next maybe next time we'll do, uh, next week we'll, well, not next week I'll be at the museum, but maybe weekend after next we'll do a live and do some stuffed waffles. What do you think? So, well, I will be uploading this onto my YouTube channel as well, so, plus I get the replay here on TikTok. So, um, you, you will be able to, to review it and re-watch and re it. Uh, feel free to, to like this and to share it. And I do appreciate everybody taking their time out of their day to spend with me here and Watch me act a fool. Well, it's not much of an act, but <laughs> but again, everybody have a great rest of your rest of your Friday. God bless and God save America, and I appreciate y'all. Take care, everybody. Bye, Jimmy.